Hey, Maria back with another video. It's 1.58 p.m. It is Saturday. Happy Saturday, everyone. Just want to come on here and make this video. I just got back. Uh, well, actually, I got back a while ago. I had some lunch, and then I started looking for work, you know, which I'm required to do, and I will tell you, it's not been easy, and I want to kind of go into that a little bit, but, um, you know, I, I, this video is called Moods because, you know, I would say since um, the targeting issue, I have severe mood swings, severe mood swings, you know, and I understand because I've read forums about other people who've been stalked, you know, um, if you're being stalked, whether you know who it's, who it is or who you don't, if, if you know who they are or not, um, it makes you very nervous and, and, and skittish, you know, um, I, I think they call it schizotype O disorder or something where your mind starts flipping around like you're doing something and you're always looking over your shoulder like is something going to happen because I remember so many petty arguments that would lead to and escalate to being bullied in the workplace because of the stalking right so you're constantly waiting for bullshit to happen you know it's like it just becomes like an instinct so I deal with that and I deal with um, you know I'll wake up in the morning and I just feel like dark you know um, anybody who threatens your job or your ability to live um, it is like putting a gun to your head and this is not me dig big, um, digging up a, um, an argument it's just that we all know that and we only we only freaking work right so we can keep a roof over our head we only work so you can take care of your kids you only work I mean this is why we're here right this is our means of survival and when somebody's playing with it like juggling it or you know setting you up in jobs only because it's funny or whatever um, they don't value your life and you uh, you're completely aware of it whether the person who's hiring you or not understands that you understand it you know because you know you have responsibilities you might have had dreams you may have you know I might I remember thinking hey you know what um, I, I want to be able to to travel I didn't necessarily want to um, spend the rest of my years here in this community or whatever you know um, when when you're blacklisted that prevents you from moving wherever you want to go so it's like somebody dotting out and just blotting out your life with no regard and that is a uh, when somebody's you know messing with you at work over and over and over and over again you start to have these mind flips you know and I'm, I know I deal with them a lot and that's one of the things that prevents me a lot of times from getting things done um, I would say there's days where or maybe a few days I'm on track I'm doing good doing good and then we have things like that last job interview that I went to the trigger all right here's somebody with the uniform you're telling them how you feel about the uniform and they're ignoring it you know what I mean and or any other sort of that's a form of gaslighting okay um, I remember explaining gaslighting to somebody else at one time um, but gaslighting is a term with where somebody is basically um, manipulating you through a certain situation or changing a, a reality or forcing or or manipulating a certain situation to create a certain reality that deviates from the truth right so where it's 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 meant to deceive you you know what I mean and basically put all the responsibility on you to make it feel like something is wrong with you right for thinking that so I get gas on it a lot you know and I deal with the uh, that's it is it's very traumatizing like I said because when you think about what it means when somebody is playing with your ability to get a job and your reputation it it's it, it's just, it's just like somebody putting a gun to your head over and over and over again so I deal with it my moods um, this morning I woke up really it's very very dark mood and then yesterday I didn't do anything I um, I stayed in bed pretty much the entire didn't make up my bed that's a very strange thing for me to do right but I was just so like I was starting to feel good and then that job interview just completely took me down all over again um, I don't need any more triggers you know and I it's really important for me to um, um, get on with my life and I understand that I, I personally perceive the collective of being a very sick or people who who think it's funny to undermine me try to demean me or in some ways and I don't I don't feel safe with this particular group of people okay and um, this is what I'm expressing because they know that it's abusive but they continue to do it how am I supposed to feel about looking for work 
How am I supposed to feel that somebody would do something like this? Also, um, this is not me digging, but I understand like at 52 years old, people do put a lot of pressure on people to get married, but that is a very foolish thing to do. Um, like I said, you know, I, I'm trying to avoid abuse as much as possible. And I, I've mentioned several times, like when I was younger, you know, how I envisioned married life. And a lot of women get suckered into that. Some people, maybe they do have good relationships. I've never seen too many good ones, okay? I've never really been in any good ones. I didn't think my parents had very good ones. Um, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a matter of choice, okay? Um, but just because somebody can open a door for you, does not mean that you should marry them. Now, when I was younger, I would say that my mother kind of um, planted th that seed in me because my dad took care of my mother. And my dad and my mom was from a generation where um, women relied a lot on men, you know, and that was looked upon as normal, you know, for just about everybody. That was the man was the breadwinner, you know, and the woman stayed home and raised her kids. Right, and so my mom was always like, "Well, you go, you find a guy with a good job, blah 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 blah." And I thought this is like this is what you're supposed to do in the back of my mind. But I also wanted to get married for love, you know, like an emotional type of love, you know, like a bond type thing. Um, that obviously doesn't exist. There's a lot of betrayal that goes on in the sort of relations. So you, when you're younger, you have fairy tale type ideas, and and like I said, all those TV shows movies, magazines, whatever, especially musicals and stuff like that, they tend to really reinforce all of this magical thinking, you know, and that's not reality. You know, it's not. There's a lot of abuse out there, and it's, as you can tell, like, I, I, I'm dealing with a lot of, like, post-traumatic stress disorder symptoms, um, that go untreated, and I really, whether the, I really believed in people not being perps in this operation or not and it, this was this went throughout the entire community to where I felt like there was no purse they so I could go where I could get the, the adequate help that I needed regardless whether I believed in the medical profession or not okay because the gossip and the communicating to the very people that were abusing me right um, but I deal with it you know I deal with um, this doom and gloom type feeling that comes over me all the time because you know when I was younger um I made you know I made mistakes when I was younger of course who, who doesn't right and you know I got together with my son's father when I was 19 years old and I feel as though um you know I'm always going to be judged on what I did when I was 19 years old you know what I mean people move on um and it, it I think that the community thought that I was some sort of adulteress because they may have thought that I was actually married to Bruce and that wasn't true. And I and I, let me define what a marriage is based on the law, okay? Marriage is based on um, the acknowledgement of two people becoming a union, okay? Um, that's uh, ordained by the state and also some sort of religious type of ceremony, okay? But the only the state recognizes it when you get it through like a actual marriage license, which is issued through the state, okay? That never took place. We never had a marriage license. We never were married legally. That's what the legal system. And we never had like a ceremony. Some people get married through ceremonies, but they don't actually go through the whole legal system of getting a marriage certificate. So therefore, they're not gonna ever literally be acknowledged as married as far as the state's concerned, okay? But religiously or through the state, there has been no agreement of marriage uh, with me and Bruce, okay? Um, some people would say, this is the reason why some people look at um, kids who are born out of wedlock. That's what it's called. It's, it's, if you are not um, married to somebody, then they'd say, oh, that's your um, out of wedlock. And for people who are extreme traditionalists where they, um, you know, I, to me this, this is so silly, but you know, the word illegitimate uh, means like because you weren't acknowledged under the house of the father. Like the father was supposed to be like the guy who um, had names to be, you know, you, you pass his name down to a person, right? And it's somehow supposed to make you 
worthy of a person and worthy of existence. That's a rule that was made by people who were like higher class type people. We're not high class. Okay, we're just simple people. All right, and that's not to say that I'm excusing it, but I'm trying to let you understand we never got married. We never got married. So people thought that I was a an adulteress um, because maybe I married Joel, right? I had no idea that people thought that I was married to Bruce and that this was whole thing was going on. And I also um, didn't know that Bruce's family was arranging my employment. So people must have looked down on me and thinking that I was some sort of fucking whore or something. Um, and that wasn't true. So I ended up carrying the burden of something that I should not have carried. Okay. Um, so that's the definition of marriage. That is the only way you can define marriage. You know, I mean, and I don't know why so many people thought something different. You know, I mean, unless, of course, we're dealing with ignorant people, which in this case, I believe that we were. Um, I never married Bruce. And um, and I know, like I said, you know, I, at 52 years old, we have people talking about me getting married. I'm, I'm making the best decision for myself. You know, um, we, as we can see, this man has abused me. Um, he did everything he could to prevent me from moving on with my life. Um, and then the same person who would come in and harass me and whatever. And then, um, so you see how common this is? And not only did he do this, okay, but he had people to help him do it. Okay? Meanwhile, people like me have no one to, to take care of them. You know what I mean? I'm victimized. You see what I'm saying? People helped a person who, who was abusive. Whether they did, he did this, got people to participate through deceit or whatever, people participated in something like this. So in a world like this, do you honestly think I want to sleep under the same roof of somebody who can poison me, who could beat me and I can't run away? Some people are single and for certain reasons and really it's no one's business. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm very sorry that this was made like a public issue. It's extremely, you know, annoying to me. And, um... And think about how insensitive it is when I go into a job interview. You know, you're basically telling people, hey, let's set this person up for harassment. Every time you do that. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't think it's funny. So it, it does cause people to have, you know, because um, you, you never know or feel safe or feel like, um, like there's any point to anything you know so this week you know I'm trying to to want monitor my mood make sure that um, I don't get too what do you call it depressed I don't like the depression you know what I mean um, it's been really hard for me to feel happy about life because you know you, you don't want a relationship with these people but they somehow tag along and unfortunately they pollute the people that are around so, you know, you come to this realization that, you know, you're never going to have friends. You're, you're always going to have to be by yourself. You know what I mean? These, it ruins every aspect of a person's life. And you guys have ruined every aspect of my life. Seriously. Every aspect. To the very point to where it's like, you know, I can't even, you know, feel comfortable going at a job and feeling like, you know, I'm, I'm well-rounded. I'm, I'm okay. I'm full. You know, I'm a whole person. You know, it's like constantly picking on me and drawing attention to me. And it's like, I don't fucking appreciate it. I hate it. You know, and it's like, <sighs> I'm constantly bear, you know, bearing the burden for something that I don't deserve. You know, anyway. But that's how I feel. And then and those, those emotions come up and they, they surface, you know, um, at certain times, you know. And I think a lot of it comes up at I don't know at night and then when I wake up in the morning it's there and it's like oh I'm getting pissed off or I get really depressed you know because I keep thinking my gosh you know the world around me is, is pretty much always going to suck it's always going to suck for me you know and that's it's tor it's fucking terrible you know what I mean it's like they won't let you have any sort of friendships relationships or people that you can care about and make, or make your own little group out of because people need their own little groups and cliques like I would love to have a girlfriend to come over and talk and whatever they it gets polluted okay I, and really uh, that <laughs> it's like my god so you take away my ability to move wherever I want to I have no social life 
um, they demand me doing this and that it's, it's just it's just too much like narcissistic narcissistic I mean extreme narcissistic and to deal with that kind of abuse and then not and trying to figure out why like well, why is everybody talking about me and doing all this stuff because people are believing things that it's not it's not true you know you can't be an adulteress unless of course you're committing adultery I can't be committing adultery because Bruce and I were never married you know and making and having somebody arrange your job does not mean that that person's your you know your um, your spouse and then also like the fact that just because somebody arranges your job you know does that mean that they own what you do why well, it doesn't obviously but it, it's just um man I can't tell you how I just felt so like sad like I can't believe this would happen like I can't believe like I, I kept thinking about my mother and how much I resented her for thinking that this was okay that she should have told me that this was going on she should have said something you know um, I know that she knew that how I felt about having a relationship with um, Bruce's family I know she knew that I didn't want that um, and maybe that's why she didn't tell me but uh, you know what my mother was a very ignorant woman like I said and she once again I paid the price for her stupidity you know and that's too much of a price to pay when I think about the price that I paid for having to deal with these people I mean like I said um, this has been going on since I can remember since he was like a little, little little bitty kid you know and I could have had a happier life I could have had a happier life without the bullshit you know I'm not all bad you know we all do stupid things when we were kids you know and um, but I think that it, this do I think that this was a, a hate crime yeah I do I deal with the fact that I was a victim of a hate crime I, I, and it was a hate crime it was people who felt so much resentment for it for me and maybe because he was pissed off because I didn't like cry and beg I was just okay fine I'm gonna get on with my life maybe I don't know what the deal was what the hell you know just because for the fun of it like I had no I sometimes wonder like what a sick fuck can you be how sick and warped can you be to do something like this you know what I mean and it it literally sickens me you know I'm not reserved for Bruce I'm not going to sit here and make my life different for Bruce or or change anything in my life for somebody who who abused me you know what I mean and I, I don't that's pretty much what I really want to say you know it, it's just how in the world how in the world could somebody normalize this sort of behavior I also thought a lot about you know targeted individuals who have no clue you know who's been targeting them and the sad part about this issue is that um, no one's really going to see the importance of this matter like there's so many people out there who are being abused there's so many people who have nowhere to go no place safe to go because people have gotten caught up with this bullshit you know like people like me let's just say for example at the height of my targeting okay when I had people thinking that I was some sort of whore or whatever and let's just say for example I went to a homeless shelter because I ended up homeless because you could very well end up homeless because these people hate you that much okay I almost ended up homeless when they made me lose my job over at JK farming fuck you Joe Kassarev for sitting here letting me go knowing what I had to face you're an asshole I hate you forever anyway um, this is the kind of shit that they do for fun okay and um, now let's just say for example I had nowhere to go you know I would have tried to go to the homeless shelter and those people would have treated me like shit see you know people don't think about what they do when they do it okay you God, I, there's so many things I want to say to each and every one of you I wish I had the ability the right to watch you guys get executed so I could see you gone off the face of this earth so I could feel safe again so I can feel like I never have to worry or wake up scared to death ever again 
okay the the trauma is real I know that you guys you just miss it like it's nothing it's real it's real you know it's very real and I god damn it hug man I don't ever want to see any of you guys again so <clears throat> I'm hoping that this week I'm gonna get better and not let any triggers get to me I hope that this week I get things that are get done um, I am having a very hard time dealing with like going looking for work you know I as you know I'm required to okay by the state of California and I know that I could do a better job at my my job search why well, but a lot of it I do get triggered there's times where I have to literally coax myself okay Marina you need to get online and www.indeed.com or whatever you know whatever it is you need to start looking for work you have to do this and it's like I'm so afraid to have to deal with somebody calling me in to fucking play with me to waste my time and just to be the mouthpiece for people who basically are um, launching a hate campaign against me I don't need to deal with that you know what I mean I don't know what your fucking problem is, but I don't need to be abused by you. You know, especially by people who claim to be religious. But that's pretty much what I wanted to say. You know, um, there's so much that goes through my head and throughout the day. And um, obviously because, like I said, I'm never going to get that closure. That this affects my sleep. It does, you know. Um, yeah. I think that's what I wanted to say, you know. This causes people, um, like, kind of the kind of mental pain that you, um, you can't really describe. So, you know, I know that, that we, <laughs> we are, this world is filled with wicked people, wicked religious people, which makes it even worse, right? Um, but maybe I hope that maybe somebody will recognize someone else who's in this situation and will not participate in something like this again. You know, I really hope that somebody learned something. And like I said, it's hard because I don't believe in people being good. I honestly look at most people and I keep thinking they're probably evil too. <laughs> you know, what else am I supposed to think? If you go along with Terry Collins' plan, knowing what she is and what she does, then I'm basically facing racist people. I'm basically facing people who are just bullies for the fucking fun of it. And she obviously loves bullying me. She loves it. She gets a charge out of it. Okay? And I don't deserve it. You know? It's like crazy. Crazy people. Yeah, the world is crazy. And I would say the, more, the majority of people, yeah, most people are kind of mentally off because we do live in a very hard world. We live in a world that is, you know, literally runs people over. The reason why people want to bully me is because I'm not like them. Okay? If I was an asshole, and if I was hurtful to other people, I would fit right in. This is what this lesson, this, this whole issue tells me. If I was one of those people who was competitive, who wanted to harm people, who gets together with people, because the majority of friendships are based on gossip, right? And if there's nothing to gossip about, there's no one to hurt, nobody to bully, there really isn't much to say. See, now, I wish I had a friend that I could just come out, they could come over, and we can, like, do some cooking together, we can go do some, I want constructive friends. You know what I mean? I, I'm, not, I'm not into bullying people, hurting people, conspiring against people. I, I'm not into that. And the re that's why people, you know, uh, want these people want to bully me, right? Because I'm not like them. Thank goodness, you know? Um, but I was also thinking today about... Um, how I find it so funny that this is a religious issue or that they made a religious issue out of it mainly because you know um, I know the majority of people who claim to go to church and stuff the majority of those people there they do they're there for um, clout they're there to rub elbows with other people they're there to whatever but most people really have no idea what it means to make a spiritual decision about this certain issues I mean, like, when you're really faced with certain issues, are you really going to do exactly what Jesus would do? And, I mean, obviously this kind of shows that, no, they don't. But um, the, if a person followed, like, the scripture the way it was supposed to be followed, okay? Like, if somebody really took their Christianity seriously, they would be hated. 
they would not people would not like them very much why because they would not they would always be the one that kind of spoils fun when everybody wants to do some bad shit this person's going to be off the side like no i'm not going to participate in that i i would not do something like that and they they know why because they have a commitment to their higher being and they believe in that Okay, and so there's, there, and then the other people who claim to go to church and, and, and to worship God and whatever, these people are like, well, you know, they, they try to put pressure on this person to be just as evil and wicked as they are. I mean, this is what I'm looking at, uh, you know, and the, how I see the outside world and, and how they view their religion. They view it as a ticket or some sort of benefit that they get. But it's not a devotion. And then God forbid, like I said, you get hit by a bus or something one day and you're wondering like you know you'll be begging you know <laughs> begging for you know please forgive me please forgive me but uh, come on like when people fuck my shit over that one of the reasons why I will never accept these people's apology is because it went too far and the majority of people they do shit that's just too far and then they they want to make an apology on their deathbed you know oh I'm sorry I'm sorry I didn't mean to be bad I didn't mean to be bad but it's too late you know what I mean it's too late then because you've already showed what you really are you're only saying it, and just like right now, Terry Collins doesn't give a fuck that she did to me psychologically. She could care less. Okay? What she cares about is her image. You know what I mean? That's what she cares about. And that's the majority of these people. You know, it's sad that, I'm <laughs> saying seriously, I cannot tell you what a sad thing it is that this happened to me. Like, I, I literally mourn my life. I mourn it so much. You know what I mean? Because it's like, how unfortunate. What is the saddest fucking thing that I ever did in my life was meet these goddamn people and was born into a fucked up family, which started the whole process. And then I just met more narcissistic people and it spun into something really disgusting. That's what happened. Anyway, I'm going to wrap up this video. Um, I hope that targets, you know, start to um, stand up for themselves and really look at these people for what they are and don't be afraid to expose them just like I'm making these videos here throw it all out there throw it all out there and why do I say that because you're being blamed for something like in this case I was blamed for being an adulteress and something else whatever um, when I, when it wasn't true you have the right to tell your story what, what happens with is you're isolated you're never around other people you're not going to be able to develop any relationships that are you know of any substance so everybody believes the dialogue that these people set out for you is what people believe you know what I mean or or there are people believing that how I was at 19 is who I am today whatever you're never gonna get your chance to to defend yourself in these arguments that you know, during your workplace mobbings or something so you need to make videos and you need to send them to your purse they, they don't really have to send them because they probably can watch them anyway whether they, they you let them know that those videos exist or not because they sit there and monitor every goddamn thing you do but send them to your perps send them to the certain people around the neighborhood let people know that you're out there making videos let people know that you're aware of what happened to you okay this shit could kill you okay these people are sitting here juggling your life like it's a fucking game and, it, and it's, it's telling you telling you it's subliminally telling you that they don't give a fuck about you just like Steve Marie said, hey, you know, your job doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yes, it fucking does matter. And don't you dare sit there and devalue my life. And don't let other people devalue your life. So if you're a target, get out there. Start making videos. Take care of yourself. I'm going to wrap up this video.